Hey, welcome back. Welcome back to this Thirsty Thursday edition of Liquid Lunch. I'm John Tobacco. We're coming to you live as we do every day, noon to 2 Eastern now, uh, from the Newsmax headquarters in Midtown Manhattan. And after we bring on some legal experts and social critics, we get down to the nitty gritty where we mix it up with a Republican and a Democrat. And we got a dynamic duo back again. These guys, I don't even have to do any work in this segment. Uh, <laughs> managing director of One Empire Group and uh, candidate for New York City controller, Republican John Burnett joins us. And uh, on the left, David Eisenbach, uh, Columbia um, professor, our in house. Uh, presidential historian and also a Democratic candidate for New York City public advocate. Guys, thanks for joining us again. Um, next, you better mix it up good today because next week Eisenbach's going to be on Skype because he's going to be in Italy. Uh, so we're, you're not going to be able to get your hands on him. But uh, everybody's talking about now is there a recession ahead and the markets are nervous. The European banks are charging negative interest rates. Shipping is down. Uh, David, are you guys waiting for a recession? Is that going to hurt Trump in, in, in the elections? Well, it will definitely uh, hurt Trump. But the, uh, the big tell is going to be the crash. Uh, if you'd remember that um, we were officially in recession in December 2007, according to the National Bureau of Economic Research, the, the stock market didn't crash until September, right? And then the, uh, they, they officially pronounced the recession started in December 2008. So there's a time lag between when a recession starts and when it actually hits the market. Unemployment, all-time lows, African-American uh, all-time historical lows, and uh, growth still coming in that two to three range is something on the forefront here, Johnny? Well, David and the Democrats are extremely desperate. <laughs> and, and I think they're hanging their hats on a recession, right? We've seen uh, candidate Elizabeth, Senator Elizabeth Warren touting this, trying to signal politically. And we've also seen some professionals looking at the inverted yield curve and things of that nature. But what they have discounted, right, is the consumer confidence level. Wages are up. Unemployment is down. Even look at the mortgage applications, up 22% in the last week, 81% year over year, right? So consumer confidence is high, right? And when you look at the globe, you just mentioned it on the intro, negative interest rates. Where are these countries and these foreign businesses, where are they placing their money? They're placing their money into U.S. Treasuries, right? Right. So, so the and demand, they, demand and price is up. Yield is low. Yield is down. And when when we get another rate cut by the Fed, right? And that'll balance the short term versus John, long term. John, things were so great. Why is the Fed cutting rates? The Democrats because didn't inv invert the yield curve, right? This thing is common. It's and and it's going to come down fast and hard. And the question is, does it come down before November 2020 or after? Yeah, but when you when you listen to uh, Chairman Powell's words, he actually categorized this rate cut as an adjustment. Why? Because he raised rates last year too aggressively. Too much. Because he thought so, he, was, so, so now he was trying to get ahead to of make, inflation, right. and the inflation didn't really start happening. But you know what, John? You just made another very good point, right? We haven't seen inflation. Right. Even amid all the tariffs, it hasn't hit the consumer. Why? Because many businesses have absorbed any additional cost. Why? Because demand is up. Yeah, it's they, just not he there. Doesn't like it. He doesn't I'm like it. I'm indicting. I'm, a, I'm not a lawyer, yeah. but I'm indicting. The Democratic rhetoric right here, right now on liquid the market. Democrats That's right. Did We're not, indicting it. The, the Democrats <laughs> did not invert the yield curve. Right? Every time that yield curve gets inverted, as you know, a recession hits uh, fairly soon, within a year, and we have a stock market crash. It's going to rebalance within the next 30, 60 days. If the economy were doing so well, guys, we would not, uh, Donald Trump would not be urging one point taken off the. Uh, right. uh, uh, it's an uh, adjustment. Benefit. It's a, By historical a, measures. This is a desperation move to prop up and keep the big, fat, ugly bubble that Donald Trump, the candidate, spoke of. Keep it uh, uh, a bubble. Right, it's, you know what? It's a manufactured bubble by the Democrats and Fed, Fed let's Fed keep, Let me keep this rolling. Let's go to the Fed chairman. I personally am a big supporter of the president's economic policies. I'm not a supporter of the president beating the heck out of the Federal Reserve chairman and make, trying to make policy. But he's doing it. Um, what, what do you make of He's not trying Trump? to make policy. 
What he's trying to do is make sure that we're doing the right thing. Because if you don't, not only do you tamper with the American economy, this is global, John. Is he you know what? You didn't do this correctly last year. And the Fed chairman came out in his own words and said it's an adjustment. The only thing prop, that's, a, that's a confession. The only thing propping up this economy is the ability of the American consumer to take on more debt. Household debt is at record levels. And if we had a higher interest rates, they would have a problem covering those debts and the whole thing would collapse. Donald Trump and the Fed have to keep those interest rates down to keep the American consumer borrowing money. It's going to create an even bigger bubble, and when it collapses, it's going to take out much of the middle class. Well, this leads to a uh, Fox News poll that says uh, Donald Trump is 56% uh, unfavorable. And this is Fox News. We know they've been slipping their way to the left lately, Fox, but they're saying 56% of Americans are not happy. Well, you know, I haven't del delved into the uh, finer points of the poll, but I will say this. Polls were wrong in 2016, right? Oh, yeah. We still have over a year to go. Right. Right? Oh, yeah. and, and, and when the president gets this... Uh, USMCA signed, when, when the China deal is actually done, and I'm still confident that it will get done, right? When all these things come together, we'll see Dow 28,000. I think we'll see Dow 20. We'll, we'll see more investment coming into the United States, not Look, just into treasuries, we're gonna but into jobs. We're going to keep these guys. We're going to come back with these guys. Final 30 seconds, 56% disapproval. Look, if, if we see the Dow above 30,000, it's guaranteed that Donald Trump will win. If we see Agreed. it below 20,000, it's guaranteed Donald Trump will lose. The question is, what happens in the middle? And time will tell. I'm going to give that an agreement from them that if the market's <laughs> up, Trump wins. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back right after this. We're going to mix it up some more. We're going to talk about Trump making his way over to New Hampshire and all the stuff that's going on in Hong Kong and China. They're waving American flags, and uh, we'll be waving them again right after this quick commercial break.